Please remember there are additional resources and things such as code samples at elithecomputerguy.com. So if you're watching one of these classes and you need to know what code looks like or if you need the links to the resources that we're using, please go to elithecomputerguy.com and take a look at our class posting there. Also, please remember that free to the end user classes are not actually free. It costs me a lot of money to be able to provide this type of content. So if you could click on the donate button and throw in a couple of dollars every month. This will help me be able to continue to provide you this type of material. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we are going to be going over variables and concatenation in Python. So up until this point in the Python series, we've talked about what Python is and the basics of how to write and how to run Python scripts. Now what we need to get into is actually talking about variables and something called concatenation. So what concatenation is, is you have a string. So a string is text. Uh, think of a string as a message, something like hello world. What concatenation allows you to do is basically allows you to glue variable values together into a string. So you can say hello, person's name, you know, how is the weather today? Something like that. That would be concatenation. Hello plus the value for the person's name plus the rest of the message. So this is going to be very important uh, with going forward in Python. It's important to understand with any of these programming languages that we're always going to be interacting with variable values, right? So we're going to have a variable name. That variable name will be assigned a value somehow. And then that is what the script is going to work off of. If you have an if else statement, if this variable value is above a certain amount or below a certain amount, do something. While loops, while uh, the count is below <clears throat> the number of this variable value, uh, continue to do this loop. Uh, input data into a database, basically input variable values into a database. So everything that we're going to be interacting with uh, with Python is going to need those variable values. Sometimes we're going to manually assign the variable value. So we're actually going to go into the code code and we're going to say like name equals Bob and that's us manually assigning it within the code itself. Uh, other times there's going to be a user input. Uh, so using something called the input function or something like that, we are going to ask the user uh, for information for that variable value. They'll tippy tap type it in, they'll hit enter, and now that variable value will have whatever value that they assign to it. Or <clears throat> many times uh, with variable values, uh, you'll be pulling information out of databases or data stores. Uh, so basically you go to a database, you make a query. When you pull the information out from the query, uh, the name uh, for that query will be assigned to a certain uh, variable. The age for that query will be assigned to a variable. The shirt size for that query will be assigned to a variable, so on and so forth. So variables are very important and it's important to understand basically everything is going to be working around these variables. Now with different programming languages, uh, you know, they deal with variables in different ways. C++ deals with variables in a way. Uh, Py, uh, PHP deals with variables in a way. Uh, and Python deals with variables in its own way. Uh, one of the important things to remember with uh, Python is that it does have data types. So you may hear uh, JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, uh, is not a typed language. Uh, so what a type means is basically the data uh, that's in a variable value has to be a certain type of data. Uh, so an int. So an int is a whole number. 1, 11, 256. 330,000, right? That is an int. A float is a decimal point, uh, 12.25, uh, 30.65, right? That's a float. A string is, is text, hello world, or something like that, basically a message, right? Those are different uh, data types. So one of the things in certain programming languages, right, you do what's called declare a variable. You declare the variable. This is the name of the variable, and you assign it a data type. So name is a string. Age is an int that type of thing. So some uh, some programming languages force you to, uh, to, to create the variable uh, and also assign it a data type when you create the variable. Some 
programming languages are simply do not have a data type, at least for the uh, the plain vanilla version. There's something called TypeScript in the JavaScript world. We're not going anywhere near it, though. But in JavaScript, uh, basically, you just simply have variable values without a data type. Where Python becomes interesting, because everything has to be its own quirky way, is Python actually does have data types, but especially as a new person, it can get it confusing because it auto assigns the data type when the variable value is assigned to the variable. So if you have name equals Bob, right? Name, the value for name will be Bob. Python will see that it's text and will assign it the string data type. Uh, you know, age equals 11, it will see that it's a, it's a, in, an integer and it will be assigned as an int. You know, cost is 25, $25.50. It will see 25.50 and it will sign it as a float. So it is a typed uh, programming language, but it auto assigns the type based off of the information that you give it. This is one of those things. Like when you first start out, it's like, wow, this is easy. This is wonderful. And then as you go on for a little while, you're like, this is stupid. I hate it. It's a pain in the ass. Because one of the problems you can get into is basically with data types, uh, what the pro why programming languages have data types is so that you don't do something stupid. Like you don't add 12 to Bob, right? So imagine you have variable values and let's say you're trying to add them up and then divide them by something to get like an average. Well, what if you have 12 plus 34 plus 65 plus Bob divided by four, right? <clears throat> that could be a problem. And so why types are important is the programming language will see int, int, int string and it will fail it out. You'll get a hard fail to say you try to add a string to ints and that's stupid, right? That's the important thing. In non-typed languages, you can get weird errors where 12 plus 16 plus 34 plus Bob might actually give you an answer. The issue that you run into in the Python world, though, is since many times you're not manually assigning the data type, is that you'll run into issues when you go to add numbers, when you think two numbers are ints or two numbers are floats. One of the things when you run your code, you might find out one is a float and one is a string, right? 25.50 is a float but it can actually be assigned the string data type. So when you try to add 10.20 plus 25.50, but 25.50 is a string, not a float, then you will get an error. And so you can run into that sometimes, especially like with concatenation. Uh, you, you, you write things out and it'll tell you, you know, you can't concatenate an int. And so then you've got to go back and then change the data type. And I'm going to show you how to do that today uh, in today's class. Uh, so the important thing to walk away with this is that this is a type, Python is a typed language, but it automatically assigns the data types for you. Uh, and then beyond that, like with all of it, you know, it's just work. Basically, what, what's going to happen is you're going to go tippy tap type and you're going to get very, 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 very frustrated. And then you're going to keep doing it again and again and again. And after a while, it will make complete sense to you. And some noob will walk up to you and start screaming about auto automatic data types in Python. You'll be like, ha, ah, noob. I remember when I was like you two weeks ago. So anyways, that's the, that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about in today's class. Now, before we jump into the, today's class, I do want to tell you about the absolute best resource on the entire internet. It might, might actually beat ChatGPT. W3 Schools. Let me tell you, they are not paying me a dime, but over the past five years, I've gotten so much value out of this website. It's just amazing. Uh, basically, this is an online versions of a dummies book. And for almost any programming language you're looking at, whether it's HTML, CSS, Python, Java, PHP, React, MySQL, whatever else, they just have a tremendous number of lessons and basically just information snippets that make it very easy for you to understand how to do whatever it is in the language that you're trying to learn. Again, the big problem that you're going to have learning programming is a lot 
lot of the idiocy of the syntax, right? Did you put the comma in the right place? Did you do things how you think you should have done it? So many times you just need a place to go, I need to understand the syntax a little bit better. Uh, with this, if you click on, let's say, Python here, you'll see you get all this. Intro to Python, syntax, casting, strings, tuples, sets, if, else statements, functions, the whole nine yards. So if you're sitting there and after a class that I've done, you don't quite understand if, else statements or something like that, you can come here and they give you just a really freaking simple breakdown without a lot of additional information. So if you want to move faster than I'm going in these classes, or if you need any information that isn't, uh, that I don't present to you for some reason, I'm telling you, go to W3 schools. They have not paid me a penny, but the value that they've provided me over the years is just absolutely immense. Absolutely great resource. Now, since I already started talking about W3 schools, we might as well just throw up their web page on data types. No reason for me to retype this out. Again, basically when we're talking about data types, it's the type of data that the, the variable value has, right? Uh, so we have text type. So string, str is string. When we're talking about a string, we're talking about a user's name, Bob. We're talking about a message, hello world, that type of things in a string. You have numeric types, int, so that's a whole number, 11, 25, 556. You have float, 25.50, 33.33, the whole nine yards. And we have complex, which we're not going to go into here. Uh, there are sequence types, list, tuple, and ranges. We're going to talk about those in future classes. Mapping type, this is a dictionary. This is kind of like a named key array sort of sort of if you're from php or something like that uh, we have set types boolean bytes and none types so some of this may seem a little bit confusing to you but one of the things i want to show you is that there is a relatively limited number of data types within python right some programming languages you get into they have a crap ton of data types just for numbers and so whether you're going to use a float or whether you're going to use a decimal maybe maybe a huge thing um, i actually know somebody that was uh, creating this really cool app that was using GPS. And I didn't realize it. I, I forget which is which, but basically he was using floats. But floats cut off the decimal after like nine, nine decimal places. It cuts off whatever the remainder is. And so whenever he was doing tracking, um, the, uh, the, the tracking was just kind of a little all over the board because he was using GP, GPS precision. Uh, and so literally all he had to do was flip over to using a decimal data type and that gave far more, uh, you know, digits after the decimal point. And so he was actually able to see a better GPS track for, for what vehicles were doing. Uh, and so that's one thing to be thinking about with whatever programming language you're, de you're dealing with is what kind of data types there are uh, to verify issues like that. Is the data type you're using chopping off numbers, you know, after the nine decimal places or something like that, that you may actually need? Uh, the cool thing with Python is it doesn't get that sophisticated. Again, strings, uh, basic numbers, uh, basic whole numbers, uh, decimal is floats. Uh, then we have things like lists. We'll deal with frozen sets. We'll deal with Boolean. Boolean is either on or off. Uh, and then bytes. Uh, these, these these binary types down here, uh, these are generally for files. Uh, so when you're dealing with an image file, when you're dealing with an audio file, may, many times you'll have to turn them into bytes. So this is pretty uh, simple here. If you go down, it can actually show you a little bit about setting the data types. Again, string, hello world, int 20, uh, float 20.5, complex 1j, list is like apple, banana, cherry, tuple, apple, banana, cherry, that's his own thing, a range of numbers, uh, dictionary, name is John, age is 36, you have a set, you have a frozen set, you have Boolean true, you have bytes, you have the byte array, so on and so forth. So this kind of just gives you a basic over, uh, over overview of the data types within the Python world. Just remember in the Python world, data types are relatively simple. Um, you just have to, to make sure you know what data type you're supposed to be dealing with at any one time. 
So here is a brief example of creating your variables and then assigning values to them and then seeing how Python then automatically assigns the data type, right? So we have message equals hello. So this should be a string. Number underscore var equals one. So that should be an int. Float underscore var equals 1.11, right? So this is how uh, we would create and then we would assign the values for variables when we're creating a Python script. Uh, down here, we then have the print function. And one of the things that, that we, we have is a function called type. And so what type does is it will tell us the data type of a variable. So we're going to say print the data type of message. Print the data type of number var. Print the data type of float var, right? So basically if I go and I click on the run button here, we will see that message is a class of string. Number var equals a class of int. Number float uh, or, or float var uh, equals a class of float. So we simply assigned the value to the variable and then it auto assigned the data type for us. Now at the bottom here, um, I have commented out a little bit of code. So this is a way you can comment out multiple lines of code. Uh, double quotation mark, double quotation mark, double quotation mark that starts a multi line comment and then to close it, double quotation mark, double quotation quotation mark, double quotation mark, closes a multi-line comment, right? So I'm going to get rid of this here. So I'm going to just delete that. And then basically with this, this is how you can change the data type of a variable. So by using int for float var, this will turn the float var value into an int. And then here we're assigning that new value to float var. So we take float var is 1.11, we turn it into an int. So if we're turning it into an int, what you have to be careful about is it's gonna get it's gonna get rid of those decimal places. And so float var should now be one. So if we do print and then simply float var, we should simply get a one there. So if we do this, again we see string and float one, right? So we had 1.11. We turn 1.11 into an int. An int does not have a decimal place, so therefore everything past the decimal place gets tossed, and then we print out the new value for float var, and that is one. So this gives you just a basic idea of how to create in a variable, how to assign the variable, and understanding how those automatic data types work. So now let's take a moment to talk about concatenation. So concatenation is basically where we're going to automatically create uh, strings. So we're going to create messages many times to the user, right? So you log in and the website says, hello, Bob, how are you doing today? that type of thing, right? That's what concatenation is. Uh, so up here, uh, we're going to create three variables. We're going to have uh, two string variables and one int variable. Now we're going to have message. So a message is just whatever message is. So it's going to equal single quotation marks and then whatever is between those single quotation marks will be the message. So single quotation marks, hello. Now it's important to understand in the Python world, more or less 99.9999% of the time, it doesn't matter whether you use a single quotation mark or a double quotation mark, you just got to use one of them. You open with a single or double quotation mark and you close with a single or double quotation mark and whatever is in the middle, 99.999% of the time, it will not matter. So a lot of times in my lessons, I'm going to be using the single quotation mark uh, and that's simply because apparently that's, that's how the young kids do it nowadays. Again, it is kind of weird doing technology for a long time. I'm used to the days when everything was double quotation marks. So I'm just used to doing double quotation marks, but now all the kids do single quotation marks marks and I, I look like a boomer if I use, uh, use double quotation marks so I use single quotation marks. Welcome to the real world of coding. <laughs> Why do you do it that way? Because I don't want to be called a boomer anymore. <laughs> Anyways, right? Message equals hello. Name equals Bob. Age equals 36. Now there's a number of ways that you can concatenate. One is with pluses. 
The other way is with commas, and the other way is with something called an F string. Um, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to print all this out for you so you can kind of see how this works. Uh, I just want to take a look at these first three uh, to begin with. So I will actually comment out these, uh, these last two. So if you put the pound sign or the hash sign in front of a line that comments the line out, that means that Python will no longer try to run whatever code is on that line. So when you're debugging or trying to find a problem, uh, again, using comments uh, can be a great way to do it. You just comment out a chunk of code that you don't care about, verify your first code works properly, then uncomment things out and go from there. So I'm just going to comment this out for a second because we don't want to deal with that now so anyways so message so so we're going to say print so print when we do it this way everything has to be within parentheses the whole thing has to be within parentheses and then message so the value of message so this is within parentheses and then you do plus name within parentheses so the value of message plus the value of name plus single quotation mark i'm happy you're here now you'll notice for this, I don't have any uh, punctuation in here. It's I'm happy you're here. We'll talk about why I did that in a minute. But basically, so this will print out all as one line. Print message, comma, name, comma, single quotation, I'm happy you're here, the same thing, right? This will print out all in one line. And then F string, F strings are the best way to do it. You put F first, F, single quotation mark, squiggly bracket, message value, then there's a normal space here, name value. So with an F string, it makes it really easy because basically you just plug in the variable values as you're going. Uh, you notice there's no quotation marks or anything else or pluses. Message, name, I'm happy you're here. Uh, so if I run this, right, so what you're going to see here is so message plus name plus I'm happy you're here is hello Bob I'm happy you're here when you use the pluses when you use the pluses it does not automa automatically add a space for you hello is right on top of Bob which is right on top of I'm happy for you right so it's all basically all of that gets scooshed together so depending on what you're doing that might be a good or bad thing. If you're trying to concatenate, let's say, numbers together, if you're trying to concatenate some kind of identification that you might use for, for a SQL statement, you might want, want everything squished together. But with the pluses, you get no additional uh, spaces unless you purposely put them in there. With the commas, what you'll notice is hello, space, Bob, space, I'm happy you're here. So with the comma, it automatically adds a space after every variable value that you plug in. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Depends on what you're trying to accomplish at the time. Then we have the F string, which is basically the best way to do all of this. F str to be clear, F string is how we're going to be doing almost everything. With the F string, it's just literally formatted exactly as you show it. So message, and then I put a space here, right? So there is actually a space here. So that's the space. Name value, that's actually a space. I'm happy you're here. And that prints out exactly as I put it here. Again, the nice thing with the F string, so if I put in lots of spaces and I print this out, you will notice the F string is formatted uh, exactly like I formatted it here. And so that is why the F string is so nice. Uh, so with that, let me uh, toss these. Uh, let me get rid of, well, let me comment out the top ones here. And then we will, oops, and then we will uncomment out the bottom ones um, to show you something. Okay. So now with these bottom ones, uh, so we're using the F string here. But one of the things that you have to worry about, um, especially whenever you're doing things like concatenation, is that you don't accidentally escape out of whatever it is that you're trying to do, right? So if you open with a double quotation mark, you have to close with a double quotation mark. If you open with a single quotation mark, you have to close with a single quotation mark. Well, you notice up here where I open with a single quotation mark and then I don't have any, any other uh, uh, single quotation marks in here. 
if I open with a single quotation mark before the I, and I put another single quotation mark before the M, right, for that, for, for that, that would actually exit out. So we do I and then close out, and the rest of this would be would be basically you would cause an error for you, right? You open and then you close. So this is one of the things that you can think about with the double quotation marks and the single quotation marks, and where again it is important every once in a while. So I open with a double quotation mark, message, name, I single quotation mark, am happy your single quotation mark here. I opened with the double quotation mark, so it will not close until I get a double quotation mark. So since I'm using single quotation marks here, that is all fine, and that will work properly. The other way uh, to deal with things, let's say, uh, again, you want to use single quotation marks, is to escape out, right? So this is opening with a single quotation mark, message name, I, and then you do the slash, before the single quotation mark, and that escapes out the single quotation mark. So what this tells the Python is ignore the single quotation mark uh, as if it is actual Python code, just essentially read it as a string. And again, I escape out over here for the single quotation mark again, and then close with a single quotation mark here. And so when I run either of these, Again, basically, you'll get, hello, Bob, I'm happy you're here. Hello, Bob, I'm happy you're here. So either, either of these will get you the same results. Now, the important thing, again, uh, let's say, so I open here with a, with a double quotation mark. Um, if I tried to, let's say, do this. If I wanted to be like snarky, if I want to be snarky, I'm happy, I'm happy you're here right? And just to show you, so double quotation mark, message, name, I'm, and then I want to put happy between double quotation marks, right? I would do the double quotation mark, but as soon as I do that, I actually close this out, and then this is going to be an error. So if I run this, it'll tell me I have an error, line 15, print message name, I'm happy, invalid syntax, perhaps you forgot a comma. All right. So basically what I'm going to do is if I, if I want to be snarky, if I want to be snarky, I can do the escape. So I do the slash and then I do the slash. So that escapes out of those double quotation marks as to ignore them. And then if I run this now, hello, Bob, I'm happy you're here. Right, so this is this is some stuff to be thinking about uh, with this concatenation. The next thing that I want to show you is again, it goes back to that whole uh, data type thing and the problem if you're trying to do something with the improper data type. Right? Okay, so here, here is basically like uh, this up here. Right? Message name, whatever. So print message plus name plus you are plus age. Right, so string plus string plus text plus int in a concatenation. If we try to run this as is, because that's an int, we will get this failure. Type, type error can only concatenate string, not int to string. Right, so basically, when we're sitting here and we're dealing with this, it wants string plus string plus text plus string, that's an int, and there we get a failure because of data type. So what we can do is kind of like what I showed you before, age equals string age. So we set, we set age up here to 36. So we set age to 36. It auto assigns the data type of age to be an int because it is 36. So what we're going to do here is we're now going to assign the data type of age to be a string. So it's now text. So age is going to equal string of age. And then if we run this, it's all smushed together, but hello, Bob, you are 36. Right, so this kind of gives you an idea of how concatenation works. Uh, the big thing uh, that I'll tell you is f strings, 
F strings are what's going to make your life very happy. Generally, don't do these this other type of concatenation, but it does exist. And then with F strings, again, just remember whether you use uh, double quotation marks or single quotation marks, you open close. And so that's where you just kind of got to figure out uh, what you're trying to do. Uh, with whatever it is uh, that, that you're trying to write out. So do you want to escape out of something? Do you want to use single quotation marks? So you can open with single quotation marks and have double quotation marks in the middle. Uh, so like with this, right, I could do, I could do single quotation mark, single quotation mark. Oh, no, and then I have that anyways. <laughs> then you got to go through and figure all this out. And that's, that's just the mess of, again, trying to figure out that, that single quotation mark and double quotation mark whenever you're dealing with long messages. And it's just one of those things that, you know, you'll work your way through. Uh, so this is the basic of text concatenation. And don't worry, we're going to be doing a metric crap ton of it uh, with the classes that, that are going to come after this one. So that was the class on the basics of variables, data types, and concatenation within Python. Again, if some of this is a little bit confusing to you right now, don't worry. We've got 20 plus more classes just on the basics of Python. That doesn't even want you get into when we start getting into the fun stuff with uh, with artificial intelligence or computer vision or anything like that. Everything that I'm showing you today is just a very, very basic uh, set of information where after a week or two, this will come to you uh, with sec but like second nature. Again, the more that you write code, the more that you program, and frankly, the more that you fail, the more you'll see where you run into problems and then realize how it is that you need to solve those problems. Again, it can, the concatenation is a perfect example of where in the programming world, really in technology, there's always 10 ways to skin a cat, right? Uh, so if you want to concatenate, basically put text together, you can use pluses, you can use commas, you can use F strings. There's different ways to do concatenation. How you do it really depends on your programming style. And more importantly for you, how you do it may actually revolve a lot around what the previous coder did and the legacy code that you're walking into and basically trying to keep that all nice and neat. That is one thing to be thinking about uh, if you're going to be going into a production environment, if you're going to be going into like a development company where you are writing uh, code or if you're modifying code other people have written is you want to make sure the syntax is all more or less the same. It's very similar. So whatever style, you know, one person did concatenation is, you should probably keep that style up. Going from pluses to commas to F strings, back to pluses, up to F strings, couple of commas for concatenation, that can be very confusing to read. Uh, and so whenever you're designing your code, one of the big things is just figure out the style, figure out the syntax, that you want to use and basically just stick with that. Again, if you're going back and modifying somebody else's code, many times code readability is more important than quote unquote perfect code, right? That's what you get from a lot of people. I would not write inefficient code or whatever. Well, here's the thing. Somebody else wrote the code base. You're modifying it. Frankly, you're going to leave, right? You're so amazing. You're so amazing and smart. You're going to be leaving, you know, pretty soon anyway. So somebody else is going to have to come in behind you. And one of the things you find in the real world is sometimes, you know, writing things inefficiently or doing things that you would consider not the best, quote unquote, the best way to do it might actually be easiest, again, from that readability standpoint. If you have 10 people that have gone in and modified code and they've all modified it with the same styling method, it's relatively easy to read. Like you might have to go, oh, this is how they did it in the script. So I just got to remember that. But, you know, like I say, it's much harder when you're, you're bouncing from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, right? If every single person that modified a chunk of code modified it with their own, their, their own preferred styling, it becomes a real mess to try to maintain that going in the future. So that's just one of those things to keep in mind. Um, again, like F strings apparently is a newer way of doing concatenation. So again, 
<laughs> when we're doing our projects, we're almost always going to be doing F strings. But if you're dealing with code from 10 years ago, you know, they might be using the pluses or the commas or whatever else. And so it might be better just to stay with that styling uh, versus, you know, modify to the quote unquote better way of doing it. Just one of those things uh, to keep in mind. Again, uh, with Python, it is important to understand that this is a typed language. That means you do have data types, ints, floats. Again, we're going to deal with lists and sets and oh, dictionaries and all that in the future. Don't worry about that. Uh, the important thing to, to remember, though, is that it is typed. It's not like JavaScript where it's not typed. It is typed. You just don't necessarily manually set the type. And so again, <laughs> that can run you into some funny issues. And that's why whenever you, write, you, you run your code, you always look down at the bottom and see what errors are popping up. Many times that will show you the issue that you're dealing with. Uh, so just, just be careful with that. And again, remember, if you're going from float to int, again, if you're new, new to programming, right, a float has nestable points and int does not. So if you take a float number and turn it into an int, any of those decimal points simply go away. Uh, so imagine, oh, let's say you're doing uh, some kind of like cash register system. And so, you know, you're tallying all this information and then you change the data type into an int, all the decimal points go, go away, right? Let's say, let's, and that's where you have to be careful with, with this kind of thing. Um, let's say you're trying to print things out on a screen. And so you say, okay, I'm going to take this flow and I'm going to turn it into an int so I can concatenate it and print it out on the screen. But once you've turned it into an int, are you now using that int to add up the tally so that all of those decimal points, all those pennies, dimes and pennies have, have not been counted when you actually add everything up. That's the kind of thing that you do have to be careful about with going between data types. But anyways, we're going to do a lot of projects and a lot of other things. So hopefully that'll make a lot more sense for you going into the future. Uh, and the final thing too is, again, if you get confused with anything that I say, or if you just need some additional information, please go to W3Schools. Whether you're learning PHP, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, or Python, or any of the other languages, it is just an invaluable uh, resource for you. And it'll make you, your life a lot easier if you use it. So as always, I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing the next one.